Our New Testament reading is from John chapter 11, verses 1 to 16. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day and he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world, but if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. The word of the Lord. So just prior to this section, uh, prior to this pericope, uh, Jesus has uh, gotten in trouble with the Jews of Jerusalem and Judea. He said that he and the Father are one, and so they took up stones to kill him. And for this reason, Jesus took the disciples across the Jordan, away from Judea, away from those who wanted to kill him. So the disciples are there enjoying some rest, some time away from persecution, away from those who are seeking to arrest Jesus and probably them as well. So they're on the other side of the Jordan, and Mary and Martha send word to Jesus. Something has happened. So Jesus receives this word that Lazarus is ill. Now the text makes it very clear to us that Jesus loves Mary. Jesus loves Martha. Jesus loves Lazarus. And so when Jesus receives this word from them that from those whom he loves, concerning one whom he loves, what do we expect to happen? What did they expect to happen? We expect Jesus to put on his running sandals, make it back across the Jordan, go into Bethany in Judea, and heal him. Jesus has healed many people, people that didn't know him yet. And so now one whom Jesus loves is ill, and Jesus, what does the text say he does? Verse 4, but when Jesus had heard it, he said, what he said, first, uh, sorry, wrong verse. Verse 6 is what I'm trying to say. Uh, five and six. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. So he hears this word. He hears this entreaty. And he stays? Why? Now, I can imagine Mary and Martha, after they had sent word, they would feel, okay, we have sent word. We have asked him to come and heal. 
And he loves us. So he will come. And they wait. And they wait. And they wait. They wait as Lazarus becomes more ill. They wait as Lazarus is at death's door. They wait as Lazarus dies. They wait as they wrap Lazarus' body in grave clothes. They wait as they put him in the tomb. They wait as they seal it with a stone. And still, they wait. But Jesus loves them. So how could he be so callous as to wait and stay beyond the river? Do you feel like this? Do you feel like you know Jesus loves you and there is a thing that you've asked for and yet he waits? You have You have sent word to Jesus through prayer to move and to act. And it seems like he's on the other side of the river still. The 12 disciples, they respond in a different way. They don't want to go back across the river into Judea. They don't want to be Jesus to be arrested. They don't want to be arrested. To go there is to die, Jesus. Why would you want to go across the river and go back into Judea? It's dangerous there. Why would you lead us there, Jesus? I thought you loved us. I thought you would care for us. That is the land of death, and there's nothing for us there. We're going? Okay, fine, we'll go and we'll die with you. Fine, we'll go into the land of death. We'll go and see a dead man, and we'll go die too. Do you feel like this? Wondering why in the world did you sign up with this Jesus? who is leading you into the land of death. He is leading you to die in some way. For some, it may be little deaths. Maybe public shame and scorn and humiliation. For others, it may be literal death through martyrdom. So why follow this Jesus there? Well, let's pick up the text and see what happens. Verse 17, Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is coming into the world. The text goes on and and, uh, her sister sees Jesus and she says the same thing. If you had been here, he would not have died. 
And so Jesus comes. Jesus is troubled of heart. Jesus sees their weeping and their groaning over Lazarus, and Jesus, knowing full well what's going to happen, as we know with this familiar text, knowing full well what would happen, because it was written before time, knowing full well what would happen, Jesus is so moved by their groanings and their concerns and their pain and their suffering that Jesus himself weeps. He joins in their weeping because he identifies with them so much. And so Jesus weeps. And they said, see how he loved him. And so Jesus deeply moved again in spirit. He then calls for the stone to be rolled away. And as we all know, he says those words that we long to hear one day for ourselves and for all those who have gone before us when he calls by name, and he said to Lazarus this time, come out. And Lazarus came out, alive. Now Jesus did not merely have the power over life and death. Jesus did not merely have the power to resurrect, like Elijah, calling upon God to do this. No, Jesus says something far more. Jesus says that he is the resurrection and the life. So what we see here is in the land of death, there's not merely a hope of a resurrection to come, but there is the resurrection and the life in their midst. Come into the land of death and die. And so for those of us who wait and wait and wait for Jesus to move, for Jesus to act, for Jesus to come across the River Jordan to answer our pleas, we can wait and know that the resurrection and the life has come into the land of death to undo it. But this is not a graveside visitation that Jesus is doing. This is not a visitation to console the family. This is an invasion of the land of death. This is a liberation for those who have been imprisoned. And so Jesus comes bringing not just life, but himself, resurrection and the life. And so as we wait, and we wait, and we wait and we say, time is running out on this Jesus. My clock says I don't have much time left on this Jesus. The doctors say there's not much time left, Jesus. We can know that we follow the resurrection and the life. As Jesus calls us into his service to go into places that we don't want to go, places that are way too risky for us, places that would lead to our death, we can know and have confidence that we are not going alone. We are going with the resurrection and the life. So my brothers and my sisters, in this, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? Mary and Martha believed. We also see some of those who witnessed it believed. We also see that some who witnessed it had their hearts hardened against his words. And they went and told the rulers of the Jews about what Jesus had done, which ultimately led to Jesus' arrest, trial, persecution, uh, crucifixion, death, and burial. But of course, we know that Jesus, the resurrection of the life, the Father raised him from the dead and he lives forever 
and we shall join him in that resurrection. But you see, there are two responses that you can have to these words of Jesus, that he is the resurrection and the life. You can believe and be blessed and join in the resurrection and the life. Or you can see and hear and harden your hearts. So my brothers and my sisters, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Do you believe this? Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending us your Son, Jesus. We thank you that you sent him to obey perfectly where we have gone astray and sinned. We thank you that you have sent him to take on all of our sins and to die the death that is due to us. And we thank you that you have raised him from the dead, vindicating him. And that you will one day raise us from the dead as well for those who believe in the resurrection and the life. And as we wait, as it seems like you are tarrying, Lord, help us to know that we walk with and follow the resurrection and the life in this land of death. So be glorified as we respond to you in faith and belief. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.